Yeah, look, it was absolutely incredible. Obviously, like I was really excited and looking forward to it. Like, and we had our our bumps on the way. Like, and I suppose as well, like COVID through a massive part of that. Like, it was going to be difficult for every team going uh, to prepare as best as you could. Like, and we uh, had a training camp down in Cape Verde, and I think the first two or three days, the cases started to to ramp up within our own camp, and there was a split in the in the camp with basically who had and who hadn't had COVID to train like separately. Um, and even when we arrived down there, I think Amanda was still left behind because he needed a, a negative test before he could travel. Uh, so they, them preparations were a bit like mixed up, I'm sure it's the same for, for every team. But once we got down there together and we realised, right, we're here to play football, saw so if any blips just kind of go out of your mind. And uh, we kicked off the tournament through the game against Ethiopia, which was probably a bit difficult and, and sluggish and probably reflected our preparation. But... To get to three points and, and celebrate that, like at uh, my first Afcon was was incredible. It was a great feeling, uh, and then we had the the game against Cameroon, uh, just to finish that group off, um, where we were allowed to have eighty percent of the capacity of the stadium full, and um, Cameroon Cameroon being the host nation, they had an amazing crowd and just the the feeling before the game of you kind of arrived on the on the stage to be a big footballer that was just overwhelming for me, like and. We got a great result for them, which ultimately took us through to the to the next stage against Senegal. Like, and we were sort of quietly confident that we we might be able to cause an upset. But then I think a, a bad dose of fuel poison hit the hit the camp, and uh, yeah, it sort of uh, kind of halted our dreams, I suppose, of progressing. Like, but through the good and the bad, for me, everything was fantastic. The experience that I take back, uh, say, so even when I was probably hanging over a toilet. Uh, in the in the, the lo- in, in the lowest of times, you kind of ref- you reflect on yeah you reflect on that and you think like what an experience that was because throughout all that sort of bad stuff you still have to go out and play football you know and that that's the only thing you control you can't control what happens like you get sick the, it's thirty six degrees in the day you just have to, to deal with that and what you're there to do is play football and you have to try your best to produce your best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it, it, it's it's difficult to win the games because you're just so focused on on the job in hand. But I, the one that will, will vividly stick out with me was when we were warming up in the Cameroon game. Um, I think we were out forced and we were in a circle together and we were just like going through our stretches and that. And then the Cameroon team entered the, the pitch and the noise from the fans that were in the stadium was absolutely incredible. I felt like I was going to war. It was like war cries uh, just echoing around uh, the, the whole stadium. And we were sort of looking around each other like and saying, this is it, like, this is why, why we wanted to be here. We wanted to play in these games. And uh, yeah, we, they had superstars on the pitch as well. Like, so it was great to, to compete against them and they're supposed to come away with a point. Um, that ultimately saw us true. It was just a fantastic memory to have. Absolutely. Yeah, so it was a bit, I'm obviously, a, I was well aware of my heritage growing up, like, but as far as given the distance between Ireland and Cape Verde, your, your probably focus is on the country that you were born in and living up in. That was always Ireland. And look, I've always had ambitions of, of trying to make as a footballer and playing professionally. And, and thankfully, if I did that, like, uh, but the Ireland dream was sort of something that was 
dead and buried just given the, the quality of, of the team and the players who I grew up with like um, we had some really strong players at the time who made international uh, football for Ireland so the dream was sort of dead and buried and I remember I, I, when I started out sorry in, in the League of Ireland I was playing part-time and um, I was in college for a bit and I think one of our, our modules uh, required us to set up a LinkedIn account um, and it was end up being through the LinkedIn account maybe five or six years later that the manager at the time for Cape Verde messaged me um, in Portuguese which uh, I, I didn't understand I didn't speak at the time um, and I just thought it was a welcome message because when you connect with someone on LinkedIn it's normally like, like a great message so I just ignored it uh, rudely, yeah, rudely and uh, thank, thankfully uh, they looked over my ignorance and uh, they messaged me sorry the manager messaged me back about nine months later but this time it was in English and he asked me, did he consider the proposal? So I did what I should have done in the first place and copied and pasted his first message into Google Translate. And they were saying, they were looking at getting their new players into the, the Cape Verde squad, would I be interested? And from there, it just snowballed. I was like, yeah, uh, my apologies about not replying to you earlier, but I'd love the opportunity to, to represent Cape Verde if it was still available. And they said, yeah, and we got the papers done pretty quickly. And uh, I think a month later, I was, I was playing against Togo in a friendly for my debut. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose, yeah, as, as, much, as much as the recent, I suppose, up until the recent uh, qualifiers, it's probably the, the most Cape Verde that I felt, um, which is a uh, really nice feeling, I have to say. I was, again, probably overwhelmed with the support we had uh, in, at home against our last game against Angola at home. Um, it was just the fans were incredible and they really got behind the team. Um, you get to see people... Um, throughout the streets, I think we had a day off and um, after the Angola game, and I went out with a few of the lads who were, who were local to the area, and everyone you meet in the street, they stop, they say hello, and just like they appreciate all the effort you give to the national team, and then um, my Creole is coming on bit by bit, so I had the opportunity to speak with that, and I think looking back when I came home from that trip, it was just like this is an amazing feeling, like I feel like I'm, I'm accepted as a as a as a Cape Breton, which I've always made uh, been made feel that, but I think. The confidence in myself that to, to feel that I, I'm a part of the team and, and the group and the people as a nation, it really stood out to me. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, and uh, again, it's part. I, I say it's always something I knew about growing up, but it's it's never really something that I, I actively maybe explored or, or looked into. And it was only really since I got into the the football and and declared like that, I really sort of like dove in and and trying to find out more and. And I suppose every time I, I go I go down there, I learn something new, uh, which which is fantastic. And um, I'm looking to go down and, and, and try and travel all the islands uh, sometime in, in the future. And I still have a grandfather down there who, who you think I'd be able to see the whole time playing football, but because we play only on, on one island, I don't get to visit. So we're looking at planning maybe a trip down there where I, I'll see him down there and get to meet up with the rest of my family, which, which would be fantastic. Like And again, that would be an experience that I haven't had in geez, maybe 25 years, like, you know.
I he's so proud, like which 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 is great, like and I suppose like it sort of brought more the convergence side out in him, like and he, he's constantly giving me updates of, of back home and how my cousins are doing, and that that's been a big thing, like wherever every time I got to Cape Verde, he goes, oh your your cousin's down here now, and it'll be a new cousin who I've never met before, and uh, they'll come to the hotel and we'll we'll have a chat, like and it's great to meet family, and the the, the, the brilliant thing is like I got sort of broken Portuguese and Creole and, and they've probably broken English but we, we have conversations, we, we make it work and it's just, yeah, it's amazing. Sport, yeah, I think so, sport. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think it's any secret. I just like the people love football, and you, you see it when you go down there. Like everyone's with a ball in, in the streets. Like everyone's just like they have the idols of like the Portuguese and and the Brazilians, and they obviously have the idols that were in the national team now. Like so, Ryan Mendes, the Perry Bazzini, who who've been doing it for years now. Like and people like that to look up for, look up to when see them doing the big stage. Like it, it really does promote um football in in the country. Like and yeah, it's just it's just a passion for it really. Yeah, it's been brilliant, and I think as well as yeah, look, I've been I've been lucky to be in, involved in, in a lot of squads since since I came in. Like, and I think the confidence has definitely definitely grown, and um, the confidence in like myself within the group, and also using the language a bit more. Like, I feel like the, the lads. Like, I've always, there's something I've always tried to do since day one, and um, definitely on the pitch, just try and speak Creole because I think it was important to adapt and to show people that I'm really committed. Um, and obviously, as that got better, I was able to, to communicate more. And I think the lads respect that, like, and respect you for making the effort. And look, if if ever I was, I was struggling with the words or how you need to use English, the lads are the, are the force to help. Like, but um, it's definitely a, a probably grown in confidence to know that, like, yeah, like I'm, I feel accepted here, and I, I love being around the lads. Like, and we know we'll we'll die for each other on the pitch, and we'll help each other out, like, um, off as much as we can, like, and. To be honest with you, it's just such a great time when you go down there. If we have, we're lucky. We have a great group, and um, we have the the crack as we say in Ireland, like um, but yeah, and and everyone's involved. There's no be left out, and we make sure we have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 there's the mixed heritage mixing in, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited because um, I think we've got a, a few new young players who are, are, are breaking into the squad and, and have done since the, the last AFCON. So it was a few to look, look forward to seeing. And I think having the, I suppose, the disqualifying campaign and along with the World Cup uh, qualifiers as well, just for them to get used to playing football in Africa, which is something that you need to have experience in, um, which is fantastic. Like, so, yeah, we're looking forward to embedding the new players in and we still have the stalwart start. Are they who have that experience? So we've got a really good good mix now, and um, yeah, we're just we're just looking forward to performing on that stage.
Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a strange feeling. I think I was training at the time, and then uh, when the group when the draw was being done, and then when I was checked my phone afterwards, I seen the group. I saw I went, oh my god, any 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 chance of an, an easy route to get through? But then I think quickly I realised, hang on a second, this is the, one of the biggest tournaments in the world. Some of the best players in the world play here, and this is an opportunity for myself to test. To, also, as a as a as a team, Cape Verde and me as a player to test yourself against the best players, which is is always what you want to do uh, in football. And if you if you have any ambitions of of going far in tournaments or, or or winning tournaments, you will have to play the best teams at some stage. Uh, so I was I'm delighted as well. Obviously, the the Ghana as well. They were in the group. They were a team uh, that I w- watched fondly growing up. Like some of the superstars, like they can Sien and Asamoah Gyan. Like these play, uh, really top players who I admired and you look at their, their squad now they have some really strong players playing, playing across Europe as well uh, so looking forward to that like and obviously you have Mo, Mo Salah uh, probably be the best uh, African player in the world um, yeah to, to come up against him would, would be amazing Yeah, like it's probably there's nerves, like assignments. There's probably a determination that comes with it because um, I've I've always tried to to treat not treat the, the superstars any, any different because I think if you put them on a, on the pedestal, you, you'll you'll never get there. And you need to show them respect, but but not too much respect. And you need to realize you have a job at hand to do. Like so, uh, yeah, I think at the moment it's, it's I'm just trying to keep myself calm uh, and not get too sort of like um, caught up in the in the fact that oh you could be playing against this player or that player. And uh, yeah, just the, the key will probably be just to, to focus on the job at hand um, on, on the day. Yeah, there's a little bit of rivalry. Yeah, I, I was told. I think we were meant to be playing um, Guinea Bissau in a friendly a few years ago, um, and we were. Got, I think we played Senegal in a friendly, and we're going to play Guinea Bissau. And the managers and the coach in the group were saying, "This is a this is a big derby. Like this is a because it's each Portuguese speaking countries." And it was, it was similar when Angola came. I don't think it's 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 far from a, a nasty rivalry or one that sort of gets out of hand. But there is that sort of like I suppose bragging rights that that that, that uh, we want. Like so, yeah, there will be uh, a bit of a Mozambique could be. That's why Mozambique is a tasty one in our group as well because there is that that little bit of a derby, a little bit of a rivalry, and it'd be a good game. <laughs> um. Yeah. I suppose. Like, look, to, to not be cliche, like, but I think the the most important thing for us is trying to get a group. And um, I think that has to be the, the number one goal. Can we can we qualify for the for knockout period, uh, knockout phase? And uh, if we manage to do that, obviously, we want to go a step further than what we done um the last time. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's difficult to say. Look, I think everyone in the tournament and. Uh, we'll probably say the same. They want to win it, 
uh, and that like everybody wants to win the tournament, everyone wants to, to win leagues, but I think you can't really talk about that until you're in a final, until you're in a semi-final where you have that opportunity. So yeah, I think for me is to go down there, try and win our first game, try and get out of our group and uh, yeah, see where we go from there. Yeah, I suppose the last AFCON was 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 different. I suppose like from a tactical point of view, traditionally to what um Cape Verde teams of um throughout the years that we've always been known for our wingers and our attacking players. Like and I suppose yeah, we had a bit more of a defensive approach and probably kept the ball uh, very well. Um, having the the five in midfield like um this year it's probably gone back a bit traditionally. I'd imagine just because we've been playing four three three a lot. Um. I don't want to give too much away either if the coach has plans. Like, uh, but yeah, uh, and it's, it's gone back to that where the, the emphasis is really on the, the wingers. Like, and we've, we've got some, some great wingers, as you said. We have Gary Rodriguez, we have Ryan Mendes, we have a, a young lad, Helio Varela, who looks uh, looks very good. Like, um, I'm hoping to see more of him. And um, we'll see now when, when the squad's announced who, who's going to be a part of it. Like, but um, yeah, we've, we've, uh, we've got our strengths and we, we've got our, our, our weaknesses, which are going to try and minimise. Um, but um, yeah, we're just looking forward to getting the best best squad we can together, and uh, I mean, now everyone will play a part. Brilliant. Oh, probably Bozzini, the goalkeeper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably Elio Varela. Yeah, from from me. Yeah, I like look one. Quarterfinals, semi finals, finals. <laughs> yeah. To win the AFCON, oh, I need to tell that. I say I, Ivy Coast might be in a good show because it's the, the home nation, so I'll probably go with them. Yeah, um, but yeah, I suppose you can't really look past Salah. Yeah, yeah, he's always there or thereabouts. Yeah. Uh, no, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks for the memories. <laughs> Oh, hopefully someone off Cape Verde. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks very much, Asda. Really looking forward to it as well. And thanks for having me on as well. <laughs>